welcome back to Annotating the Light. All right, today we are back in Mark chapter 1, and this is the New American Standard Bible, um, uh, copyright by the Lockman Foundation. Um, in any case, um, let's get into it. All right, so this is chapter 1 of the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 1, uh, verses 16 through 20. We're just going to look at uh, a few textual elements of this and see how we can apply it to life. And uh, let's get to it. All right. The scripture reads, as he, he refers to Jesus. So let's go ahead and annotate that real quick. All right. Design. going along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net in the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will have you become fishers of people. I'm going to pause right there. Um, other versions of the New American Standard Bible will actually say fishers of men. Uh, the meaning is really the same. At the end of the day, he really means fishers of humanity fishers of people. Um, but let's keep going. Okay, verse 18. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were also in the boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them. And they left their father, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired men and went away to follow him. Okay, so I just want to look at a couple of textual elements uh, today. There's different things that we look at in annotating the light, but today I want to look at diction, also known as word choice. Okay, so let's look at this word immediately. Okay, let's look at this word immediately. Okay, diction or word choice immediately. We could also say instantly, couldn't we? Isn't that a word that means pretty much the same thing as immediately? Now, this word that is translated to immediately, okay, we actually have, uh, at least in the New American Standard Bible, we have the word immediately used um, several different times. In fact, in the Gospel of Mark chapter 1, it's used eight times, okay? Whenever you hear somebody use a word over and over again, you start to ask the question, well, why do they use that word and not other words, right? Immediately here is being used to make a point. And what is that point? Let's, uh, let's make an inference or an educated guess, okay? Jesus calls to people, and then immediately things happen. Immediately they leave their nets. Immediately they leave their father in, the, in verse 20, right? Okay, Jesus calls and things happen. If we could, you know, if we could summarize what I'm trying to, to teach today, it's just... You know, based on the diction, that is the point here, okay? Jesus calls, and things happen. So, Jesus is powerful to effect instant, life-altering. Life That's probably a hyphenated word, isn't it? Yeah, let's, let's do that. Life-altering life-altering change. In our lives. Because isn't that what happened here? You know, he 
is going along the, the Sea of Galilee. He sees, uh, he sees a pair of fishermen and he tells them to follow him. And they leave their entire life behind and follow him. And then he keeps on going along the sea and he sees two other brothers like us from a different family you know two other brothers from a different family and you know you, you notice that they're even though they're both fishermen like both both couples of brothers or whatever they they were both fishermen right i mean simon andrew fishermen james john fishermen but there's a difference in their socioeconomic status isn't there james the son of zebedee and his brother john we were also in the boat, many in the nets, immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men. Okay, so let's uh, annotate that real quick. Okay, uh, Zebedee was the dad, so Zebedee had the income to hire workers to help with the job. Um, Simon and Andrew, it seems, did not. So what does this show? What does this diction show us? I'll give you guys a second to think about that. Yeah, what does this diction show us? What do you think? Kind of give it a guess. Just uh, you're on your own, in your car, or at home. What do you think? What, what does this show us? about who, what kind of people Jesus calls. Yeah, exactly. Jesus calls people of all kinds of socioeconomic status to repent of their sin and follow him. Now, we, we have to keep in mind, when we look at passages like this, the difference between, you know, the difference between prescription and description, okay? So let me find a good place to annotate that real quick. Okay. They left their nets and followed him. Okay. If we were gonna if we were gonna look at this and uh, apply it wrongly, we might say that it's God's will for all of us to just quit our jobs and go around preaching, right? Because isn't that what they did? But that would be the wrong application, wouldn't it? Because that wouldn't account for the difference between description versus prescription. Okay? When you're describing, you're saying what happened. Okay? Sometimes the Bible describes what happened. Okay? And sometimes the Bible tells us what should happen now. Right? Okay, so if a doctor prescribes medication to you, what is he doing or what is she doing? The doctor then is trying to get you to modify your behavior in some way. Like, hey, take this medication. Hey, take this cough syrup, okay? Drink it two times a day, whatever it is. You know, they're telling you to do something, right? We have to realize that not everything in the Bible is prescriptive, okay? Sometimes it's descriptive, right? And we have to learn to spot the difference between them, you know? What's the ultimate takeaway from today's uh, Annotating the Light video? I think that is this, you know, with all this talk about, you know, word choice, I mean, the fact that they said immediately so many times, twice in this paragraph alone, right? God is powerful enough to cause immediate change in our lives and we should treat him with the respect of acknowledging that fact. 
Okay, and how do we how do we how do we do that? Well, we want to keep in mind if he's powerful enough to do that, we should keep in mind. Okay, well, why am I not seeing change in my life? Could it be that we aren't praying with the right motivations in mind? Could it be that we're not praying at all? Uh, could it be that we don't? listen to or read the scriptures enough to change and transform our thoughts about what is and isn't God's will? Could that be the reason why we're praying and not seeing a lot of change? You know, we, we, we need to keep in mind that God is powerful enough, strong enough, wise enough, and loving enough to make direct changes to our lives that impact us forever, just like it impacted those disciples forever. And that, I believe, is the prescriptive uh, element of today's scripture. You know, it's not, hey, everybody, quit your job, sell all you have, give it all to the poor, and go, you know, go travel from place to place preaching. You know, if God calls you individually to do that, sure, awesome, more power to you. But the fact of the matter is, God doesn't call all of us to do that, you know. If he had called us all to sell our jobs, give everything we have to the poor, and then go travel preaching, there would be no jobs. There would be there would be no money left, right? There would be, I mean, it would be just mass chaos. You know, the yeah, we can talk more about that in another video. The point today is trust God for immediate, positive, righteous change in your life. You know, God has the power to immediately change our circumstance. We just have to acknowledge and respect the fact that if he is willing, he can cause immediate change in our lives. Hey, I hope that helps. Please leave a like, a comment, and uh, subscribe. Um, as always, stay frosty, my friends.